let's now start talking about growth hacking. So we cannot start talking about growth hacking without talking about this man. Sean Ellis was the one that coined the term growth hacking in the first time in 2008. And basically, this guy, his job was going to startups in an initial phase getting there, um, and really getting hands on, on on the growth strategy for, for those startups. And as you may see, he went to startups that today are unicorns. So we worked for Inv Eventbrite, Dropbox, Lookout, and many others. Uh, but this guy had a problem. Basically, every, every time he was about to exit a startup, he had the job to find, one, to find someone to replace him. But he, he was looking for people that, w that could code as a developer, people that could think as a marketeer, and people that could analyze data as a data scientist. So he didn't know what to call the job title. So that was the way growth hacking, the term, was born. But uh, if you know something about growth hacking, you you sure know that it is most of the times associated with startups. And why? Well, basically, the word sucks for startups. It does. It's a fact. Startups are like this fat, ugly guy. And they have like limited resources, little marketing experience, no brand equity whatsoever, extreme uncertainty, and they have to face like first competition. They have to battle against these beautiful, looking guys that everyone knows and that are the big corps. So, and they have to fight for, for the same users. So it's like a real ch challenge for them. And that's why growth hacking was born. It was born so that guys like this can still manage to get girls like this. No, I'm kidding. In business terms, it was born so that startups can compete with the big corps. But after all, wh what's this thing? What's growth hacking? Well, Growth hacking is nothing more, nothing less than, oh, oops, uh, pop-up. I guess you have to pay me $99 to, so I can tell you what's growth hacking. I'm kidding. But did you notice what happened here? Ladies and gentlemen, this is growth hacking. Growth hacking is about capturing the micro moments in the customer journey so you can met you can make them convert much easily. In terms of a definition, it is the rapid experimentation throughout the full customer journey in order to find the best strategies to grow your product or your service. Basically, to be a good growth hacking, you have to, to master three subjects. You have to be really creative. You have to think laterally in terms of the best practices. Because for a startup, if you are just doing the best practices, you are doing the same as the big corps. And that's not good for a startup, right? And besides that, you have to measure everything. You have to be that obsessed. Because um, only by measuring everything, you will know what works best, what works worse. And then you have to be capable of creating process, of creating automation for the tactics that work best, so then you can keep exploring new ones. So every time I explain growth hacking like this, I have a problem. Like, people tell me, isn't that supposed to be Martin? Aren't you a marketeer? Well, in order to explain that better, I have to tell you a story of this guy. I'm sure or oh, you should know this guy, because we are in a marketing agency, is, this guy is David Ogilvy. Basically, he was the father of advertising. But what's most interesting about this guy is the way he went to advertising and the way he thought about advertising. Basically, previously to, to doing advertising, he was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. And advertising came as a way so that he can scale his business. And I completely share the same vision as this guy. For me, marketing needs to be only thinking about sales. It's, it's like a midterm to get more sales, to get more growth, to get more users. Like, if we look at, the, um, at ads, they are made to generate awareness so that you can boost sales. If we look at PR and publicity, it is made to, to generate attention so you can boost sales. If we look at social 
media, it is made to generate communication so that you can boost sales. The thing is that corporates nowadays are so complex that marketing became an end in itself. And that's exactly where growth hacking excels and marketing fails. Because a growth hacker does the same question to himself as a marketeer. He asks, how do I get my customers? But he answers with A-B tests, he answers with landing pages, he answers with conversion rates, he answers with return on investment. So he answers with data. And even more different than a marketeer, he has the ability to react wherever the problem is and wherever it, needs, it, it is needed to be optimized no matter the department. And just like as my ending point in terms of this comparison between marketing and growth hacking, I mean, if we look at the greatest growth hacking techniques, they all share one thing in common. Basically, they are tactics that no one previously described as marketing, but turned out to be the marketing engines for their business. I mean, I'm sure you remember Hotmail when they started in every email they had that little thing saying P.S. I love you. Well, it was like pitching to new customers every time an email was sent. Or even Airbnb, when they started, they had no one coming to their website. What did they decide to do? They went to Craigslist, that's kind of OLCs here in Portugal. And basically, they listed every pro property they had on their website on Craigslist. And so people were on Craigslist. They saw the, the listings. They clicked. They went to Airbnb. The experience was better there. And they never came back to Craigslist to, to find an, uh, an house. Or even Spotify, with their social widgets that automatically posts on Facebook saying, like, Juan Duarte is listening to Justin Bieber. Um, it's like. Like, can you imagine how, ma how many dollars they saved with these techniques that previ previously, f uh, f from being applied, were not fought as marketing? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to growth hacking, or even better, welcome to marketing, when marketing means whatever it takes to get customers. But now that we have like um, a small notion about w what's growth hacking, um, we have another question. So who should be doing it? Well, maybe that's not the right question. The, the right question should be how many people can a growth hacker be? And I'm telling you because I'm a growth hacker, which I'm also a specialist, I have to be a CEO. I'm a product manager, I'm head of marketing, I'm copywriter, I'm data scientist. Manager. I'm a debt analyst, and on Fridays I like to be a Because it can make changes on the way you communicate your product, it should be able to make changes on the way you sell your product, and it should be able to make changes on the way you develop your product. So, the question now is oh, how to do growth hacking? Well, growth hackers are sharing the same success metric, are sharing the same KPI. It's growth, it's in the name. But Close to growth hacking than growth, it's return on investment. Every tactic, every experiment we do, we do, we need to know the, ret the exact return on investment. Because that's how we are getting better. I'm going to keep doing that or not. So it's like really, really important. And about the process and the area within the company that we work in, it's like dating a girl. First, you start with the pickup lines that eventually you do on the first date. Then, hopefully, you start dating her. One, one day, you get married, if you are lucky. And 
hopefully you will get kids. The same happens with growth hacking. We are aware that we need to work on all this funnel. So while the marketeers focus more on this part, we, need, we are aware that we need to, to go all the funnel. So we, we need to work on acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referrals. And our job, our main mission, is to make this funnel as wide as possible. So that's in the optimal state. We have 1,000 people um, being acquired, and we have 1,000 people generating revenue, but also referring our product. And then it's the end of, of the game, because your product will grow organically, and you, you don't have to, to do anything. OK, so we know the process. But like when I'm talking to people and I'm saying, well, I'm a growth hacker, the ones that know what it is, they think that our journey and our work is something like that. They think that we read something, we have an idea, we launch it, and bam, overnight success. Well, folks, it isn't. <laughs> it's more like this. So basically, like we do a lot of experimentations and we embrace them. And th that's one of the um, key characteristics that a growth hacker needs to, to have. It needs to embrace fails because only by failing you'll, you'll be learning and you will know what works best and what doesn't. And one day, eventually, you'll get success. And just as, uh, as a reminder, just like with girls, that pickup line doesn't last forever, a growth hacking technique doesn't last forever as well. So this is my last point, and this is really personal. I really do think that everyone, every team, every company, every project needs a growth hacking, a growth hacker. And that's why it is mostly because of the growth hacking nature. It is 80% of doing what works, what we know works, but the real difference is on this 20% of subversiveness. Subversiveness. Basically, being sub sub subversive is, is the one who is willing to go against the majority of ideas, is the one who is willing to go against the established order. And believe me or not, if we look at the most big successes, all of them have a little bit of evil in them. So we need to embrace that. And this reminds me of a story. It's the story of the Houston airport. Basically, uh, the Houston airport administration was really worried about their customer experience. So they did the right thing. They start by talking with customers. And all the customers were saying the same thing, that the, the thing that bothered them the most was the waiting time in the baggage claiming area. It was about nine minutes. So they hired like a consulting firm, they invested a lot of millions in that, and they did an amazing job. They saved the time, so the time went from nine minutes of waiting time to six minutes of waiting time. And they were like, really happy, we did a great job, but then they asked again the people what bothers them most in the airport experience, and they got the same answer. So. They were like, were thinking about that and thinking about doing like uh, another great investment. But one guy in the room, what if we make people land six minutes away from the baggage claiming area? And if they, and, and so they will walk for six minutes. Once they get to the baggage claiming area, the bags will be already there and bam. Customers were completely satisfied. No one compare, uh, complained about the waiting time in the baggage claim, claiming area. And it was a, a success. And th this is a lot about growth hacking. You have to question everything. You have to question the problem, the solution, and you, you should only trust data. And just like the reasons why you should hire and have a growth hacker in your team, like, like we all know that projects, companies, and products have resources. Uh, we also know that the traditional marketing channels, so Facebook, Google AdWords, whatever, are expensive and saturated. So we need to find alternative ways to grow our product and to acquire customers. And 
Also, we do live in an attention war era, so even the best product in the world may fail due to lack of attention. And like, uh, for me, this is like the biggest point in this presentation. If we look at companies that are currently shaping the future, like Uber, Facebook, Google, they all have a growth team and they are investing a lot in that because they know that to grow, they have to be disruptive and they have to do it over time. So thank you. I hope you liked it. And this was me.